everyone. I am Ashley. And I'm Megan. And we are the Mito Podcast. Yes. And today we have Stephanie Tuchulte with us, and she is the owner and operator of Sunshine Ranch Therapeutic Writing, and we are very excited to have her with us today. Hi, Hi. Stephanie. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm excited, too. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, my son, Troy, has actually been uh, writing with you for, I think, about five, five years now. Um, and it's his absolute favorite therapy. Um, as many of our parents and families that are listening, um, a lot of Mito students need help with their muscle development and um, exercise and things. And they do do a lot of therapies, and many of them, they don't necessarily enjoy, <laughs> to say it nicely. <laughs> and this is, um, this therapeutic writing is something that Troy absolutely loves. So I guess my first question would be for Stephanie is, um, how did this journey begin? How did you start this? I have loved horses and been obsessed with them since I was a little girl. Um, growing up, my family could never afford horses to actually own. Um, so I took lessons from from some friends at old churches, and we leased the horse. I showed a little bit, um, but I never had my own. And when I was in college, I got really into volunteering, and uh, I volunteered at a local animal shelter, and I loved that, but I felt like that was mostly for me. <laughs> and I felt called to do some volunteer work that served people as well as animals. I had never heard of therapeutic writing in my life. I didn't know that it existed, but when I was looking for a new volunteer opportunity, I discovered a therapeutic writing program that was local. And I started volunteering with them. And after the first day, I was hooked. Um, at that time in my life, I wasn't, I wasn't really around kids that much. So I wasn't really into kids, but I was really into <laughs> animal person. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but when... I worked with horses and kids together. It was like this magic combination that I didn't previously know existed. Uh -huh. um, so I volunteered with them for a, uh, a few years. Um, early on, they asked me to start teaching some of the therapeutic riding lessons. I got to do extra horse care with the horses on off days. Um, as things went along, I thought that I was going to be the successor of that program, but very long story short, it was closed. And I was devastated. Mm -hmm. I, had, I was so in love with that work and with our students. And I loved working with our volunteers and obviously the horses. Um, so I was really sad. And I, it's kind of a complicated story that I won't really go into. But um, I just felt like I had lost the thing that I, I found that I had been in love with. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, I had two favorite horses with that program. And one was kind of moved somewhere else. And the other one was left behind. And um, I would sneak out for the, the Cleo, you know Cleo, Megan, oh, Cleo, uh, yeah. she was left behind. And so I would sneak out and take care of her and spend time with her. Um, and the other one is Ricky. And when he was donated to that program, his donor told me, wherever you go, he goes. Oh. Um, but I didn't know what that, I didn't know what to do with that. So one night I was talking with my boyfriend who is now my husband mm -hmm. and I was crying and I was just saying you know I can't afford these two horses but if I had them then we'd all be happier and he said Stephanie if you had those two horses you could start your own program yeah and I that thought honestly had never crossed my mind <laughs> because I didn't know any of the business side of things you know I didn't know how to start or run a nonprofit or all of the business things were really intimidating to me but once he said that, the wheels started turning. And at the time, I was bartending at Gordon Biersch, and my regular customers were really invested in the, the, the other program with me. And, and I just started telling them, like, I, I think I'm going to do this. <laughs> I don't know how, but I think I'm going to do this. And one at a time, like for every job or need that I didn't know how to do, somebody stepped up and specifically offered to do that job. Like one, one friend literally started the business. He incorporated the business for me. Oh, wow. Another friend um, got us an attorney to help us with a nonprofit application. Another friend did our, and still does our taxes. And another friend started a website. And it was just one of those things where oh. I kind of felt like once it started, it, I couldn't stop it. 
but I didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> but it was really encouraging because it was scary and it was a big risk. And I honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I got those two horses. My students that I had used to work with, they all came with me. The volunteers I used to work with came with me. Uh, we founded Sunshine Ranch early in 2012. And then I got my past certification the following year. So now we just turned eight this month. Or <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing that you had so many people just come together to help you with that. I mean, that's, that's awesome. It wouldn't have worked otherwise. And it's always been a, an encouraging reminder that it's such a, it takes such a team and the community because there's most of this, you know, I, I can't, I couldn't do it by myself, but mm -hmm. as a whole, it works and we, we have the support that we need when we need it. Yeah. And it should be a reminder of how amazing of a person you are that you have so many people that love and care about you and want to do these things. Oh. I know we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's really exciting to hear you talk about just taking that leap of faith because a lot of people are afraid to do that. You might have these like great ideas of things that you want to do, but you're so scared to take that step and having all of those people to back you up and give you the confidence to move forward with it is amazing. And it's beautiful. It was huge. That was what made it work. I was very fearful and I just had to keep telling myself, like, just jump and fake it till you make it and just do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Even still, there's things that I'm like, you know, they're just harder than other things to do, but just do it. <laughs> just smile and do it. <laughs> yeah. um, so I know one of our questions, and um, this is good because uh, Megan is familiar with everything and I'm not, um, the acronym E-A-A-T. Can you, what is that? <laughs> It's equine assisted activities and therapies. Okay. It's kind of a blanket term for what we do, the therapeutic and adaptive riding. It includes other things too, but that's what we focus on is the, the adaptive riding and the horsemanship. Okay, that's awesome. So the activities that, that are done, you know, in the presence um, and working with the horses. So what are, I know since we, you know, are at lessons, unfortunately not right now, which Troy's making his horse noises every single day. I'm like, we just need to drive out and see some horses for this poor kid. <laughs> but um, so I, you, I think when I first um, started uh, bringing Troy out to lessons, you know, you think that just the riding, which you can talk about that and how um, good it is for someone just to be riding on a horse. But you guys do so many different activities. For me, it was like watching Troy doing horse therapy and also mm -hmm. occupational therapy and speech therapy and all these different things combined into this one session. So what are some of the types of activities that um, you try to do when you're actually not just riding the horse or so much more? Yeah, that's awesome. And thank you for that. I, I've gone to observe a lot of different kind of therapies and I try to incorporate what I've learned with ours because we can achieve so much and it's fun. So our students really enjoy what they're doing and don't recognize the specific work that they're doing a lot of the time. Um, but w Sunshine Ranch is really goal-based and individualized. So each student has one-on-one -on -one lessons. Um, so we take the goals that are provided by the student if possible or by their parents and their family, and then we structure our lessons to include those specific goals. Um, the fun thing is that with horses and at the, uh, the boarding facility that we're at, we have a lot of options for, you know, places to ride and things to do. So you are right. It is, um, it is therapeutic and beneficial um, physically, neurologically, physiologically, um, emotionally, just to ride a horse. But we, we do lots of different things to kind of expand upon that. So for instance, we do, we do ride in arenas. Um, and when we ride in an arena, I usually set up an obstacle course and it's got you know, different colored obstacles. There's standing poles, poles on the ground, um, barrels, cones. So the purpose of these things is to engage our student and help them kind of plan ahead and make choices and follow directions. Um, so if we're, you know, weaving cones, then we're working on steering left and right or, um, you know, looking in that direction. And um, it just, it helps us with 
with planning and in that situation we're also working on a lot of social skills so our students are communicating with not only um, the volunteers and, and me but also with the horse and communicating with people and communicating with horses is very different so it, it kind of encourages um, a lot of what we do enc encourages different parts of the brain to function and, and coordinate their our, the students bodies um, we work on uh, directional and timing cues so a lot of our students uh, you know, are learning left and right. So we get to learn left and right, but it's kind of more fun when you're steering a horse around something, <laughs> you know, saying this is left and this is right. Um, so that's when we're in the arena, we do a bat. Um, and then we also at, at our boarding facility, Heartland Ranch in Lakeside, we get to do trail rides too. So they have a track that goes all the way around the ranch and that gets us out of arenas, out of enclosed space. I had a former student who his mom noticed when he was in the arena, he would kind of like track, he would be counting the, the panels of the fence and he would be focused on that. So not fully present and engaged with the other things we were doing. And when she would watch him go on a trail ride, he was actually looking, you know, around at things. He was looking at the trees that, you know, we see well, there's nature everywhere. We see little animals. Um, we get to go up and down hills. And when the horse goes up and down hills, that changes their movement of their body and our students get to learn how they can shift their weight and balance to help the horse do what it needs to do to go up and down. Um, so there's, we work on, there's spatial awareness. There's lots of different things to look at. We get to work on problem solving. For instance, if we're on a trail ride and we're on the driveway, what if, if another horse is coming toward us or a car is coming, you know, we get to talk that through like what do we do in this situation so we use a lot of um, the problem solving communication critical thinking skills um, we get to ride the horses in different gates in different directions so we can walk we can trot which troy loves to trot. Oh God, that's his favorite thing ever <laughs> you can see within that like when we first when Troy first trotted, it was very bouncy mm -hmm. and you know, the, the neck control and, and head control was less than it is now. So a lot of things like that, riding horses, it, it just helps develop so much strength and balance and coordination. Absolutely. Um, but we walk, we trot, we stop, we back up, we change directions. A lot of that keeps it more interesting for the students, but I purposely do lots of those changes because it is, you know, causing different things to fire in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, we play a lot of games where we work on the, it's fun to play games and it gets us, you know, um, to share and to take turns, um, to stretch, to balance, shift our balance. Um, but really, it's working on a lot of fine and gross motor skills. Exactly. <laughs> Just disguising it in kind of a fun way. So at, at, Sunshine Ranch, we do like puzzles. We hang rings on poles. We'll play basketball. We use a lot of different sensory toys. And I try always to remember that what we do on one side of the body, speaking with one person, we also want to flip that and do it on the other side so that we're getting, you know, that crossover. Mm -hmm. um, additional activities. Some of our students, in addition to riding, uh, help groom or brush the horses. They help tap the horses, put the saddle and equipment on is, um, to their be the best of their ability. Some of them get to hand walk, so they lead the horse around. Um, we do a lot of baths during the summer. Uh, our students sometimes help our, or let our horses graze and we get to watch them eat, which is really fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I have a, one student who has learned how to lunge the horses, so that's when you're working in, in a round pen or on a long lunge line, you're exercising the horse without being on it. And that takes a whole different um, skill set. All of those things, um, you encourage learning different skill sets. And we try to do all of this in a really fun, safe, positive, encouraging way for our writers. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely. And like I said, um, you were talking about the gross motor and the fine motor skills. It's definitely because those are things they work on in, say, occupational therapy and things like that. And for a lot of students I know with Troy, um, he doesn't like to use his hands a lot and touch a lot of things and just 
over time and doing all these different things with the puzzles and the passing of the balls and the putting the rings and things, you just watch how he's so much more willing to participate with things with his hands. And even um, touching the horse, I remember he used to just take one <laughs> finger and touch the horse. Like that was it. That, that was all he was doing. And now he's hugging the horse and patting him on the back and patting his front. And, you know, it just, you know, just those interactions with an animal. I mean, horses are big and I mean, yeah. he's obviously gotten very tall, but you know, there can be intimidating because they're so large, but just breaking that down and just really, you know, having that relationship with the animal, I think is such an amazing thing to watch too. And just the fact that they really have no idea they're experiencing therapy. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. And yeah. They, they just make everything so much better. And our horses, it's, you know, we go about things in the safest way possible so that we are helping to, to um, build those relationships and bonds. You know, it's not like, oh, here's just the thing that we're going to put you on yeah. that doesn't have feelings or that, you know, doesn't, isn't affected by how we treat it. Um, so just learning to, to kind of work together and, and develop that trust helps the things that you, you were talking about, you know, the not being as so afraid of them and, and initiating that contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old does someone need to be to be able to come to Sunshine Ranch? We start at three years old, and that's um, the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship International. That's, I have my certification through PATH. Um, Sunshine Ranch is a PATH Center member, so a lot of our rules and standards come from them, and that's one thing that they suggest because by around three a child's um, body and balance is more appropriate for riding horses than younger than that. Mm -hmm. And we serve, we don't have an upper age limit either. We serve adults as well. We just happen to have mostly kids and, and teenagers. And I was going to say Troy actually started horse therapy at a different um, ranch when we first and I th I I almost think he was maybe getting ready to turn three and it was something that he it just it scared him he did not like it at all yeah. and so we definitely stopped and we had to give him some time to just be a little bit more I guess secure with himself and with balance and moving and then as soon as we came to Sunshine Ranch he was all about it but yeah when you think about younger kids doing um, certain things like that, their bodies, and depending upon their disability or their their needs, it's definitely, it changes over time. So. Yeah, and the, the strength of, you know, the, their ability to sit up and support their own body and their, their head, you mm -hmm. know, that increases as they get older. I didn't know that about Joe. I didn't know he, he rode a little bit in another program. Yeah, yeah, he did, and he cried every single oh, time. No. <laughs> and I felt so horrible because I knew it was such a good thing, but it's just one of those things that, you know, I just, we had to give him a little bit of time and now it's, yeah. you know, his favorite thing. So that's the one thing I was really looking forward to was, um, therapy writing for Angie. Yeah. I looked up like every place I could. I kept hoping someone would say something different about the age limit. <laughs> <laughs> Because yep. I just really wanted her to, to be there. I wanted her to experience horses and and get that type of therapy. But we yeah. just get that opportunity. Um, uh, which actually, I think, brings us uh, right into a, 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 the question of about the horses. Like, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the horses and how or why they're chosen for, for riding? Yeah. <clears throat> So horses are by nature prey animals that live within a herd and have a herd mentality. So the, it's kind of funny because the things that we ask them to do um, a lot of the time are really unnatural for horses uh, because in the wild they would live in a herd and they would, you know, they would constantly move, they would constantly eat, they would have um, a very different situation than what what we create for them when we have them in a boarding facility. Um, because they're prey animals by nature, they're always looking 
to see if things are dangerous or threatening for them. And if they are, then their instinct is to like run away or, you know, the, the fight or flight mechanism and they often are flight. So when we look for horses for riding or for a therapeutic program, for me, the most important thing is their natural disposition and personality because we need horses that are kind, that are patient, that are safe. Um, often we end up um, having horses that are older in age because you know, that, that lends itself to them having more of those personality qualities. Um, but they are just by nature, they're very um, sensitive to the emotions and social cues and body language of people and other horses. So choosing horses based on their personality. We need horses that, like I said, that are kind and patient, that like people, that like working around a lot of people. Again, we put our horses in really unnatural situations. In a lesson, if there's a rider on their back, there's the volunteer who is leading the horse, and there's usually a sidewalker on either side. So <laughs> they are nearly surrounded on all sides. And for a prey animal, that can make them feel very vulnerable, very threatened. So our horses have all had, by the time we've gotten them, they've had previous jobs and careers, you know. Um, <clears throat> but once, like I said, the, um, I look for a type um, that I kind of have a connection with. And then, then we, when I get a new horse, I do um, like the, a trial period where we get to really feel each other out and let them let them kind of center so we can see who they are. Because the horse part of it is really, really important to me. Their their health, their physical and emotional health and well-being is so important to me. And that's a huge part of my daily job. Um, what we do, is, you know, the things that we do with them can cause a lot of stress. And we're not trying to stress them out, but being ridden. Um, you know, sometimes we put a rider on them that's unbalanced or that's, that's nervous or that's bouncy or that is really loud and all of those things, we do a lot of specific training and desensitization with our horses so that when those things occur, it's like old news, you know, they're not, they're not going to be ideally reactive to it. Um, but that is an inherent risk with riding any horses is that even if you have the sweetest, calm, calmest you know, most willing horse, they are still horses and they can react like a horse at any time. Um, when we're doing, uh, when I do volunteer training, I make sure that the volunteers are understanding that. Like you can't, uh, people, you know, a lot of people view horses as like big dogs. They, they want to lay on them and cuddle them. And that's, that's fine if the horse likes it, but it's really important that we are, um, that we learn how to, you know, read their body language, communicate with them and listen to them. So that if there is something that's making them <clears throat> worried, anxious, stressed, if they're physically uncomfortable, then we listen to that and we address it so that the horse is comfortable and feels safe and continues to trust us. The relationship that we have with them is one of the most important things um, because they are willing to do these things that are <clears throat> relatively unnatural for them because we ask and they, they trust us and, and usually very willingly do it. Um, another thing about our horses is that they're all very different. Um, they're different sizes. They're different shapes. They have different physical abilities and physical lim limitations. Um, so, you know, Crystal, our little pony, she's a great, we call her a great babysitter. So we can put our little, the little ones, the um, kids who are, might be scared. She's very calm and she's just um, willing to, you know, if they're nervous, she'll just put her head down and, and kind of do her job and take care of them. Uh, we have uh, Ricky and Chance, our geldings, our male horses. They both have more limited physical ability, um, but still have important jobs to do as well. And Bella, our newer horse, she's 12 now, so she's still relatively young. And she's more physically able, so she can help our riders um, advance, you know, to increase riding skills and independence. But she still is a great, does a great job of taking care of our, our other riders who need a little more assistance. Um, 
with our horses to keep them healthy and happy. It's important to me that they get to do a lot of normal, healthy horse behavior. A lot of times when people have horses in boarding facilities, they are in their corral until the person wants to take them out and ride, and then they go back in their corral. And I think, I believe that um, our horses benefit from a lot more than that. So we have um, areas where they can graze. I, I turn them out. If they get along with a buddy, I turn them out with another horse so that they get to do, um, kind of act out that, that herd behavior. Um, our, we have a vet who is amazing and they do acupuncture and chiropractic work monthly on our horses. And all of that, it helps them relieve the, or release the stress that is caused just by doing the job that, that we ask them to do. Um, with a lot of therapeutic riding programs, the, there's a big question like, what, what do you do if a horse doesn't like the job? Or what do you do when a horse is too old and can't do the job that you originally took it on for? Different programs have different ways of addressing those issues. But for me personally, when I take on an animal, I commit to it for the rest of its life. So within our program, you know, if a horse needs, it, you know, needs to be retired, then we keep them and they still get all the same care that they used to get. They just, you know, are in a more, they're basically retired. Um, that retention and happiness is really important to me because if a horse isn't happy or isn't comfortable, then they're going to show you in ways that are not desirable. You know, if we notice our, a horse starts getting like kind of pushy or might start nipping, like behavior is communication. So they're trying to tell us something and it's really important that we listen and, and help, you know, address the situation and make them more comfortable. And I can tell you as a parent who is allowing my child to ride those horses, um, you know, all of this is so comforting to hear. And I know when we <laughs> come on certain days, it's, you know, it's been, well, uh, Ricky wasn't in the best mood today. So we're, you know, and the fact that you pay so much close attention to that, um, because when you think about your child's out there riding a horse and, you know, Troy has no fall reflex. I mean, anybody, even a normal functioning person that falls off a horse, that's a big thing. It hurts. Um, and yeah. so uh, <laughs> it's very comforting to know that you guys pay such close attention and that creates a safe environment and an enjoyable environment for those horses and, you know, your riders to be in. So that's very comforting. Thank you. Yeah. Also, I think it, it also adds to understanding communication with who you're giving therapy to because a lot, I imagine a lot of students might not have that ability to communicate with words that they can only communicate with emotions. So you may actually have um, uh, be better prepared than a lot of therapists because, or teachers or parents or family or, or whatever, because you're able to be in tune with your horse's emotions and actions. And that helps you to be able to do that for your clients as well. Yeah, it has made me a lot more sensitive to a lot of things in my life I've learned psychology wise, I've learned with animals, and then I've learned that that absolutely transfers and applies to people as well. Um, but you're, yeah, you're right, horses, you know, they, they read and respond to our body language and our emotion and our energy in ways that we're often not aware of. You know, one of my favorite things about horses is how reflective they are and how, how what great teachers they are because they react to what we're giving them and if if we're you know if we come in with a negative attitude your horse doesn't want to be with you so if you approach a horse and you're feeling angry or stressed often they will turn away because they don't they don't want any part of that you know and, so <laughs> really, and if we ask a horse to do something whether you know it's something we're we're working on the ground with them or when we're riding if we ask them to do something and they don't do it horses are not manipulative they're not trying to be naughty they don't understand what we're asking and so it, it makes us realize okay how can i ask that in a way that's more clear to them and i've i've learned to kind of translate that to students like sometimes i'll ask somebody to do something and they don't do it and just like with the horses they're not being mean or bad or naughty they just it's 
it doesn't make sense. So we can ask them in a different way. You know, like one thing, just an example that popped in my head with the therapeutic writing, we have a lot of different kinds of tack. We have some reins that we call rainbow reins. So they're color coordinated and the colors match on both sides. So if, if I want a student to say, you know, tighten up their reins or shorten their reins, they may not understand what those terms mean. But if I say, move your hand from blue to yellow, you know, then they can successfully do that. So there's a, a lot of, a lot of things like that. Yeah, it does help us become more sensitive to, to people's reactions and, and how we're, how, what we're asking is being interpreted or not. I love that because I think therapy and just in general is so fascinating. When Angie was with me, I loved being able just to try to step outside the box and figure out how I'm going to teach her something without it being a conventional way. And yeah. I understood that we were never going to attend school. We were never going to have a class. We were, I was going to be that teacher. And so I needed to make it fun for me too. Yeah. It's not like, okay, two plus two is four, you know, it's, it's, I love how you can incorporate colors instead of a word or, or, um, uh, numbers or like direction, like you were saying earlier, learning left from right. And I imagine, I'm, again, I, I haven't experienced horse therapy firsthand, just being on a horse, but learning which direction you want to go. So standing somewhere in the distance and say, go to your mom or go to this volunteer, they have to use that direction ability yeah. to be able to get to that person or use that color to get to that person. It's all fascinating and amazing. I love seeing people work outside that box and, and discovering new things. It's exciting. <laughs> and that's what's so amazing about this therapy is just, you know, the different all the different things. It's so well rounded. It's not just riding a horse. It's so it's just amazing in that. Now, you were saying how you couldn't do this by yourself. And I know we have met so many amazing people that are your volunteers that help you do this. Um, so, and it also is something that, you know, you are always having volunteer trainings and things for people to come out if they're interested. So what, what does it actually take to be a volunteer for Sunshine Ranch? We, other than myself, Sunshine Ranch is completely run by, by volunteers. So we very heavily depend and lean on these people. Um, we welcome volunteers as young as 12 years old. Um, that being said, the, we need people who are um, very responsible, very aware, um, have really good, um, or just are self-motivated. Um, we've, there's a lot, a lot of people come to programs like ours for a lot of different reasons. So some people come because they love horses, which is how I, I got hooked. Some really love working with kids. Um, so we welcome people from, you know, all different areas. We don't have, we don't require that people have experience working with, with horses or working with people um, with special needs. We are prepared to train them. Um, so when people are interested, they contact me um, through our website or, or um, anyway, really. And then they attend an, a volunteer orientation, which usually lasts about two hours, and that's on site at the ranch. So we talk a lot about, you know, who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Um, it's really important to me that the people coming on to our team that we're all on the same page and that we all work together toward our mission. Um, sometimes people come because they want to ride horses or they, you know, there's sometimes it's not such a great fit, but what I've learned over the years is I focus on our mission. And if we align there, then great. If it doesn't align with our mission or people's goals don't align with our mission, then it just ends up not being a very good fit. But those are, those are few and, and really far between. Um, so once the person has attended the orientation, then they're welcome to come on any lesson day that works for them. Um, I leave it up to the volunteers to make their own schedule. Again, because we depend so heavily on volunteers, um, I understand things like school, work, family comes up. And um, so some people come to us for a short time. We have a lot of really long-term volunteers that have been with us since before I started Sunshine Ranch. Um, so they start getting more hands-on training either by, by me or by a seasoned volunteer on those actual lesson days. 
Um, we start volunteers. Usually I'll pair them with the seasoned volunteer or myself if I have time. And we'll go through a lot of the jobs that we ask them to do. There's a lot of chores, ranch chores, you know, cleaning stalls, cleaning water buckets, grooming horses, a lot of things like that. So in lessons, new volunteers start as a sidewalker. So they're involved in the lessons, but there's no, there's not a ton of responsibility put on them right away. So they get to kind of learn how we do what we do in a really um, kind of safe, safe manner. Um, once, once volunteers become more independent working with the horses, um, which takes more training um, for us, then they can do more independent things with the horses. So they, they can give them baths, take them for walks, graze them, groom them. Um, I try, a lot of people come from a lot of different backgrounds with horses. And um, it, it, it's interesting because there's, you know, if you, there's a lot of things that you can do in a lot of ways, but because we have such structure and in large part, this, we do things, let me use an example to make it easier. Um, if we're cleaning a horse's feet, we always clean their feet. We pick their feet out before they're worked or ridden because they can pick up rocks or, you know, lots of things that can make them uncomfortable. Um, so there are, a horse has four legs. So there are a whole lot of ways that you could clean those four feet. But for our horses, we start with a front foot and then we go to the back foot on the same side and then we go to the back foot on the other side and then we end with the, off, the, the other front. So our horses, they know exactly what's coming and it makes it less stressful for them and it makes them want to be kind of willing helpers. Um, so there's just a lot of things that horse people, you know, we've learned to do things a certain way and it's not that it's a right or wrong, but there's just a lot at Sunshine Ranch, we try to do things in the safest way possible. So for, for people to work independently with our horses, there's a lot that I want to cover with them to make sure that they're aware of mm -hmm. um, and why. I always want to know why. Um, so that they're helping. Every, every interaction with our horses is a training interaction. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that when people are working independently with them, that they're reinforcing those things that we're, we're trying to work on purposely. Did I answer your question? <laughs> no, you definitely did. So, I mean, the volunteers, they, it's, it's, it's definitely, there's a lot of things that go into it, but I know with our experience, everyone that's out there is so amazing and kind, and it looks like they're enjoying. Um, I love when there's, you know, the younger high school girls out there. I think Troy's always like, oh, who's this? <laughs> uh, so there's definitely, um, a, you can tell a lot of, different people that you have as volunteers and they're just all amazing. So that whatever the training is that you just explained that you do, I mean, they seem very prepared and we as parents, you know, are at ease when our child, even when you have someone um, that is new, that's training, you know, just listening to your conversations with them as you know, you're going through the lesson, you know, it's just, it's definitely, um, I know it's just something that we know that you are doing such a great job and that they're being trained so well and it puts you know parents as ease as they're on their horses I know my parents have horses and I do like horses but for some reason um, anytime I would ride them when I was younger they would just take off with me and I was never stern enough yeah and dad would always tell me Megan you need to be stern so I never developed a great relationship with them because I would you would always see my dad would be videoing my stepmom doing like dressage and all of a sudden you'd hear me screaming off in the background <laughs> as the horse would be taken off with me back to its stall it wanted to go home or yeah <laughs> yeah so I think when I first started this with Troy I was like okay you know I know this is wonderful but I was always a little nervous and you know I mean your whole program just completely puts me at ease and of course now we've been doing it for so long but yeah. um your volunteers and everyone work so well together so. and yeah they're they are amazing dedicated giving generous people um another part of that is that we do like we invest a lot of time and energy into training our volunteers i want them to stay you know the retention is really important and really helpful so for me another thing that i think about a lot is what I want to know what those volunteers enjoy, what they find the most fulfilling so that they can keep getting out of volunteering what they want, mm -hmm. you know, and then it just ends up being a really like a win-win. So 
usually at least annually, I try to do it more, but at least annually I do a survey and I ask them, you know, what parts do you like? Is there anything you don't like? Like, am I asking you to do something that you really dislike? I want to know that. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to ask people to do things they don't like. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> that's very considerate of you. <laughs> and you want them to stay, so. I want them to stay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's important to point out for everyone that's listening to that, um, uh, places like Sunshine Ranch, where you take your child that might need that type of therapeutic writing, it's not just therapeutic for the child, it's therapeutic for the parent, for the volunteers, for the owner, for everyone. It's a, it's a well-rounded, no matter how you look at it, it's therapeutic in some way. Um, you start off with the people that you're giving the uh, that, that are writing they're learning all the things that you were talking about earlier about body control communication um, how to be around a, an animal how to be around people um, distractions counting different environments it's all there's so much but also leading up to what you were just talking about with your volunteers they're learning how they're learning structure um, and you were saying how you have to teach them a certain way because the horses need that structure. And it's also teaching the volunteer structure, not necessarily, they're not going to be going through their daily life. Like, Oh, I got to clean my left foot before my right. Foot. <laughs> it's still showing them that there is a one, two, three, and we need to do them in this order. And it's showing them how to, how to work with other people in that way. Um, I think it's really cool that you can take something like this and learning like we were talking about the emotional state of, of kind of being one with the horse, understanding their motivation without words, um, and then learning that in your daily life with friends or family yeah. and saying, okay, their words don't match their actions. Yeah. And it's hard as a person to be able to do that. It's hard to communicate. You sometimes don't know your own feelings. So I think this is really cool, um, not just for the clients that you service to being on the horse, but for the volunteers, because it's doing structure, it's communication, it's teaching them love, it's teaching them trust, all of these amazing things that they can put into their daily life forever. It's a, it's a great experience, and I think it's underutilized. A lot of people don't realize how much this can do, this type of therapy can do for for everybody, everyone that's involved. <laughs> wow, that was that was so many observant things that I <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to say this, I want to say that. One thing, kind of what you touched on. One one of my favorite things that I get to see that I personally experience with horses. When I was a kid, I was so shy. I was scared to call people on the phone. I was I was like painfully shy, and. Horses helped me so much with my self-awareness and being, you know, aware of what, what I was communicating, whether it was, you know, verbally or non-verbally. Um, they have really helped me. The more I learn about, you know, training methods and because I always, like, I love, I, I'm required to do a lot of continued education, but I love that. Like, I'm constantly watching um, webinars and going to clinics and I love learning more about horses and how to work with them and that does again that there's so many parallels in that with working with people but one thing that I learned and I, I really love to see this in my students and I, I specifically pay attention to it in my my students who are girls or young ladies when we're working with horses you know they're 1200 pounds they're huge um, they're looking for a leader in a herd, a horse, there's a hierarchy of, of the horse dominance. So there's the leader, the alpha horse, there are the, you know, the really submissive horses. And then there's everything in between when we are working with horses, it is our choice. It's our job to figure out where we fit with that horse. You know, are they dominant to us? are we dominant to them? And for like, for my position, I need to be, you know, that, that alpha with our horses so that it stays safe and, and they understand what they're being asked to do. Um, but it has helped, that has helped me 
recognize and set a lot of boundaries. Like if a horse is crowding you or smushing into your space, you can either allow them to walk all over you or you can say, this is my space, you need to back out of it. And they learn that if you're consistent with that, they learn that this is my role with, with this person, like with Stephanie, this is what I am and I'm not allowed to do. And for me, like that has, you know, for relationships and just setting boundaries, like that has taught me a lot. Um, a lot of our young ladies, they come and, and they're like, I oh, was it very shy, you know, really timid, not very confident. But learning those types of skills with the horses, it, it teaches them like this, you know, my body, my say, you know, they, these are boundaries, you know, this is okay, this is not okay with me. Um, and it just kind of teaches them to like hold space for themselves. Like you deserve to take up space, you know. And it gives you a strong understanding of who you are too. Yeah. When, when you, when you are in that position and, and learning the horse of, like you just said, uh, leaning into you or not. Yeah. And sometimes I imagine it might not always be the best fit and you as a person have to understand that and, and understand those boundaries. So learning that with a horse is super important for learning that in everyday life. And, and you were just saying like all of your relationships, you yeah. know who you can be friends with and, and who it just doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think these are all great learning skills, which I think uh, is also important to tell our listeners. Cause I think a lot of times um, you might have a family who who have multiple kids, let's say you have two children, and I'm just gonna use this example because it's what, um, I guess what, what the podcast is, is focused on for Mito, is you might have a child that has Mito, and you might have a child that does not. And it's really hard to continually take that Mito child to different therapies, and having the other child maybe not feel, um, I don't wanna, without a better way of saying this, maybe they don't feel as important or they might feel neglected or they might not feel like they um, are getting the intention yeah. that the other child is. And something like, I imagine, like Sunshine Ranch or any therapeutic writing um, ranch, you can get your whole family involved. You could have your mito child take the therapy and then your other child see if they're interested in, in going through the volunteer program. Yeah. And then, parents, you're taking both of your kids to therapy at the same time, maybe for different reasons, and they get to both learn and feel important and, and part of something so amazing. Um, so I think for all families, regardless of Mito kids or, or non-Mito kids, this is um, something that people should explore more. Mm -hmm. and look into and 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 maybe just go visit you guys right or you yeah. and just we, see what it's like everything's closed down right now because of yeah. COVID. <laughs> Sorry. just kidding not right now <laughs> do come visit yeah we love having visitors um and just kind of sharing you know our message and and what we have had the exact situation that you're you're talking about we've had students whose siblings have come out and you know they get to experience a different part of it but yeah it is really fun to see that and to watch you know watch people work together and and everybody gets whether it's student or volunteer or myself like we all get something out of it you know just being around the horses they've got this kind of magic that like you some one of you said earlier it is therapeutic for everybody and people always always say that um it is very peaceful place and yeah, the more, the more, you know, family activity that we can have out there, that, that makes us really happy too. One of my favorite things about Troy's lesson is that he always has a cheering crowd. Like some, <laughs> some of our students, um, you know, their parents might take the hour and rest in their car or, you know, they do different things. And I value all of that. Like I can understand. Um, but it's always so fun seeing families like Troy's, like where literally it's almost always at least a couple people, you know, <laughs> and he always has such a cheering section and, you know, he gets excited and wants to show off his muscles and it's just, it's so fun. And it's, 
I love seeing that, that love in that situation too. Cause you just know like how loved and valued he is. And I know that he knows that because those people are always there for him. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you wanted to talk about or? Um, um, there is one, <laughs> I made a lot of notes earlier. And one of the questions that I don't think we specifically got to was the benefits. Mm -hmm of the therapeutic writing. Yeah. Um, we touched on it a few different ways, but there are some specific things. Like we've talked about our intended goals, you know, the, the things like increased physical strength, increased core strength, balance, flexibility, emotion regulation, following through on multi-step instructions. We do things that kind of help, will help in the future with um, you know, getting a job, learning job skills for some of our students. Um, some of them, you know, they're able to stand and walk more independently. Some, their goals are to ride more independently. There's, uh, some of the parents, like their, their goals for their kid is just to enjoy a physical outdoor activity, which I, I love that goal. <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about was the benefits that the horse provides that are for us kind of unintended, but so tangible and real. And I think that's kind of where the magic comes in. So we plan for all these things and we set up lessons with certain goals in mind, but the horse allows so much to happen kind of organically, like their movement, their rhythmic movement. When a person is walking on a horse, riding a horse, the horse moves the rider's body like the rider is walking. So for our students whose goals are to, you know, increase their mobility, that it's, it's moving them like they're walking they're outside and they're inside. So it's stimulating internal organs. And, you know, we've all heard that walking is, is so healthy for you because it, it triggers everything. It stimulates everything inside. And for our students who have the limited, you know, more limited mobility, horses can provide that. Um, and other things that, that kind of, that horses allow us to do is when we're riding, the, the, student is kind of balancing with every step the horse takes. So there's a lot of um, what, lateral movement. There's, and each horse moves in a different way. So some horses move a rider back and forth, back and forth, kind of like a rocking chair. Some move side to side and some move in a rotation. And when I say move the rider, it's like they're moving them from their pelvis, which kind of extends to the rest of their body. Um, so we can purposely pair certain students with certain horses based on their, their physical goals. Um, but it, one of my favorite things that horses provide is just that, um, the constant sensory input. Um, so when, you know, when we have these specific goals, we're, you know, practicing riding or, you know, fine motor skills or, um, back and forth communication, in a riding lesson, at least for us, like we're outside. So we're constantly getting, you know, we're seeing that nature, we're feeling the wind, we're feeling the warmth of the sun, we're, you know, feeling what, what happens when we go up and down a hill. And the more input we get, sensory input that we give our brain, the more the brain can continue to develop and develop and form new pathways. So you may be familiar with the term neuroplasticity. That's just what that means. Like if we continue to give our brain information, it continues to grow and develop. And some of the coolest things that I've seen with our therapeutic writing lessons stem from that. Like it's, it's, it's not things that we purposely aimed for, but it's things that happen because of what the horse and being out in nature provide. For instance, we have one young lady who's been with us since she was nine. She is, I think she just turned 14 or 15. When she was nine, her brain didn't register temperature differences. So at nine years old, she wasn't um, able to take a shower or a bath by herself because the water could be scalding her skin, but she wouldn't know it. Oh. Um, and so after like six to nine months of riding and working with us, one day she was giving our horse Chance a bath with the hose and she felt the water and she stopped and she said, he won't like this. The water is too cold. And her mom's jaw dropped. And, and you know, that, that was the first time she'd recognized temperature, but also as importantly with her, she was showing empathy. And for, with people, her family has really had to teach her 
how to be kind and how, you know, her words and actions can make somebody else feel. But with the horses, it's always come really naturally to her. Um, and then we have another student who has, uh, who has autism. And one thing that, that his mom has recently shared is how writing, and he's been writing with us for a long time too, but it's really helped him with, um, like regulate his vocal stimulating behaviors. Um, so he has become a lot more aware and in control of his body and of, of his words and what, you know, the sounds that come out of his mouth. Um, and then like for Troy, I was reviewing <laughs> the, um, the surveys last night, but just like Megan had said that he's been, become more comfortable riding and interacting with the horse, that he's increased his expression of his personality and that he's excited about coming to lessons. And, and so, you know, we have all these goals, we have things that we specifically want, but there is just that magic element that the horses bring to it that, you know, we, we see students accomplish things that never even crossed our minds, but it's just, an organic result of being around them and being on them. That's yeah, amazing. I, oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, I know that when we would drive to other therapies, because most of his therapy was at the same building, um, he would get very cranky and yeah. very grumpy. And um, sometimes he'd even cry, but ever since he figured out the route <laughs> to Sunshine Ranch, we hear nothing but horse noises and squeals <laughs> all the way down the road. So it, yeah, it's just, you know, it, like you said, it was just this organic happiness that yeah. came from being out there and riding with the horses and, you know, just the different activities and just the enjoyment of it. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just amazing to watch your child progress and to be more comfortable and to, you know, Troy is uh, nonverbal, but he definitely makes a lot of noises and I know that's something that he works on too because when he gets excited he squeals and yeah. you know sometimes it's a little too loud and so you know we'll work on that too um but yeah it's just it's such an amazing program that you have and we're so thankful that we found you and you know we're in San Diego and of course um there are these programs all over we have a lot of listeners that live in different states and different things i know in colorado where my parents live there was there's a horse therapy um place right actually next to them and so there there are many places if you're not in san diego and cannot um you know go to sunshine ranch it still is definitely something that you should look into for your child um or if you have you know, normal functioning children that want to volunteer or you want to volunteer yourself. Um, it's, it's such an amazing thing and um, we are very appreciative. Now, if someone wants to get in contact with you, how would they do that? Uh, they can visit our website, which is sunshineranchwriting.org or um, Sunshine Ranch Therapeutic Writing is also on Facebook. And um, those, are, those are the best ways. Absolutely. And I just want to say if uh, what you were just saying, Megan, if people are interested in finding or getting involved with a therapeutic writing program somewhere else, mm -hmm. um, the PATH website has listings of all of those, the PATH centers, and their website is pathintl.org, pathinternational.org. Oh, good, good, great. Well, we appreciate you so much being on with us. And the next time Troy gets a lesson after all of this is <laughs> bringing Ashley with us, yeah. <laughs> she could be part of our cheering crowd. I know everybody that visits, I'm like, okay, Wednesday, it's horse therapy time. <laughs> everybody gets excited. We're all piling in and going. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. I will definitely be a part of that cheer section. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening in. Um, we were talking to Stephanie Tetschulte. Yes. Yes, you got it. <laughs> at Sunshine Ranch. Um, we are the Mito Podcast. If you have any questions or if you have any comments or suggestions for future podcasts, please contact us um, either on our email, which is mitopodcast at gmail.com. You can find us at mitopodcast on Facebook, also on Instagram. And you can make comments wherever, wherever we have postings or email us. Um, 
think that's about it. Again, we're just two moms um, discovering different types of therapies and talking through our mito journeys. Um, so we might not always have everything planned exactly how you might hear a normal podcast, but <laughs> that's kind of how we like it. We want to be able to talk just like uh, we're talking to a girlfriend over coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so again, any questions, look for us, mitopodcast.com. Yes. And thank you again, Stephanie. And thank you to everyone who is listening. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes.